Hello and welcome to Linux Lads, episode 104. As usual, I'm Shane, joined by Connor and Mike. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Not joined by Amalit today. No, actually, yeah, Amalit is not here today. Um, he's got some uh, family engagements, so uh, it's you're stuck with us three, unfortunately. Um, the OGs. <laughs> um yeah, it was uh, it was a scorcher of a day in Dublin, so we're all a bit heat stroked because we're not used to this. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, a scorcher by Dublin standards means it was nineteen degrees centigrade. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, it was nearly twenty degrees. Like um, <laughs> that's crazy. What's that like eighty Fahrenheit or something? Eighty five. I, I don't know what it is in freedom <laughs> units. I'm sorry. Yeah, freedom units are a mystery. But um, today the topic is. Are desktops even necessary? So this was inspired by a question I had for the guys in the chat uh, a couple of weeks ago um, where I was considering getting a framework laptop uh, because you can get like pretty decent ones. You can get like a Ryzen 7 in there and or no, no, they don't do the Ryzen ones yet, do they? They do. I think they um, they recently announced it. I don't know if they're officially available on their site, but I think it's it's coming soon. So. But there's a, a beefy enough processor in there, like it's a good Intel processor. I don't ask me which one, but uh, and you can. I don't need anything more than the a good processor and uh, and a decent amount of RAM. So I don't really need a blazing fast graphics card because I don't really play games all that often. So I was like, surely I could just spend the money on one of those framework laptops, and it's upgradable and it's sustainable and all that good stuff. And, you know, it would take up far less space in the room. Um, I wouldn't have this big clunky tower under my desk that I kick all the time. And, you know, it's got like a glass side panel. So I'm worried about like kicking that in and like cracking that all the time because I'm so clumsy. And uh, it just guzzles power and everything because it's about six years old now. Um, So, yeah, maybe a laptop's the way to go. I have a nice 1440p monitor with the a decent usb docking station so you know i think that will be enough for me what do you what do you think there will always be so desktops are will never be redundant desktops will always be necessary but they might be more niche they're like it's the same argument why spend money on a big digital slr camera when your phone can pretty much take in the same photos but yeah but there's like there, there's degrees of return there like why get yourself uh, an open top top drop top ferrari when toyota do a uh, a convertible com- f- uh car like yeah. they're like there, there's always going to be people who pay a premium for a certain and they i'm not saying it's superfluous they they could definitely be spending their money wisely and say for my use cases this extra investment is worth it and um, for the extra horsepower i mean a, a desktop computer will always um outperform a laptop computer mm. it's inherent in it it has it it's a a higher class cpu even if it's the identical cpu in both the desktop computer and in the laptop computer the laptop computer uh, a laptop version of it will be undervolted because of of power constraints they want to get more battery out of it and there are um, also thermal limitations because of the smaller chassis and everything like that so the there will always be it's perpetually the same a desktop computer will always outperform a laptop computer. It's just in, inherent in the physics of it. Um, so if you're that niche, then a desktop computer will always be worth it. Whether it's worth it uh, for me is definitely an argument. I just, because I'm in this, in this, in a place where I'm in situ, I have the space, I can ha- I, I could afford the desktop computer at the time. I went, um, when I got my custom PC only a couple of years ago, for me it was a ten year investment. I'm going I'm gonna pay whatever two, three grand, whatever I ended up paying for um the components of this computer. For me that's a ten year computer. So I put in the money to think long term in relation to it. And it's very upgradable. I if I want to upgrade the, the graphics card in the meantime, I can just swap out that individual part 
But you do make a very compelling argument in relation to the framework computer because the framework computer as part of it is upgradable, whereas not many laptops would be. But for most people, I could definitely see that a laptop would pretty much do everything that they want to do, especially, as you say, you have a a, a Thunderbolt or a USB-C dock uh, you can just plug in that computer, bring it around with you, and that will suit your needs. So, yeah, exactly. it's 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 a nuanced question. It's not there's not a black and white answer to it. I mean, I could get an eight core processor in there with like multi threading and all that kind of thing. And you know, once I have maybe thirty two to sixty four gigs of RAM, I mean, that'll do pretty much anything I want. Well, I. I've never owned a desktop computer in my life. It's just something about that uh, being pinned to one place that doesn't appeal to me at all. And then since uh, obviously lockdown and working from home, uh, my employer stopped buying desktops and all everybody got is a laptop. Uh, So, and, and we are all fine. We before mm. we had like Dell Optiplex workstations, that kind of stuff. Uh, now everybody gets some kind of a laptop, you know, and and for it's because of the workstations that we had, and because they were older than the laptops than what we got that that we got later. Then obviously mm. this is an improvement. Uh, the only thing, and and obviously since we are now on hybrid work, and uh, I have to come to the office, it's really good to take the laptop, bring it home, work from home. Then I come to the office and it's literally two cables to plug into it. One, f- I have two monitors, so a USB-C that also charges the laptop and a HDMI uh, that uh, from the other monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. And you basically have got the same or you have got basically a workstation that's sitting on a desk. But in the end of the day, you can take it or you can take it uh, you can take it with you to a conference room uh, in the workplace, basically, unless you really need, unless you like work with video or you need some kind of raw power. I can't see why you would uh, even want desktop these days unless you really enjoy sitting at a chair at a desk. But in my experience, at least at my work, I have the same, I have more power in a in a much suited format. Uh, that being said, it kind of um, enabled me with some bad habits. So I started when we went started working from home. I said, "Great, I can work from the sofa," because that's what laptop lets you do, and that's not great for my back, for example. Uh, it's much better to sit in a chair than sitting on the sofa that we have here. So, um, but that's a personal thing. Um, the only thing that you guys mentioned is gamers. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's the only thing they or people who need some kind of raw power. You probably won't get away with a uh, with a laptop if you uh, like need two graphics cards plug into a plug in together with uh, with a massively hot CPU and so on. I mean, from from my work point of view, um, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but it's a engineering consultancy firm so they do a lot of kind of CAD models and everything like that um, most of the most of the laptops that are ordered are are for just ordinary office workers but we do order the workstation versions of them as well um, there, are so, there are some legacy um HP workstations with massive beefy graphics cards in them, but those are pretty much legacy. Um, most part, we're just uh, ordering like the workstation replacement laptop equivalent of them going forward, and it's just the case of uh, he already has the hardware and it functions, so we're not exactly going to replace it because there's no pressing need to it, but should there be a case then we'll probably replace it with a workstation replacement um yeah you can definitely get some very eye-watering expensive but very capable uh, mobile workstation laptops i'm even even just me recording this podcast right now um the way i'm sitting on my chair like i'd love to like stick my legs out a little bit more but i just have this big bloody desktop underneath the desk that's almost the main reason really like if i could just have my 
I have my my work computer, which is a MacBook Pro on the desk, but I'd love it if that was my main computer as well. And I could just swap out a laptop and there that's my computer, you know. I mean, for the for the benefit of the listeners, I'm going to describe it. But the the guys who can uh, you guys who are the hosts can see it here. I mean, there's a reason why my desktop computer is on my desk beside me and not under the desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose if you have a big enough desk, I mean, I'm limited in the space that I have, uh, so I can't really have too big of a desk. But um, I'm I'm working on that. <laughs> we'll see. The, I've seen I've seen some of the uh, well I've seen some I've seen Amolif's uh, uh, the, the, the Amolif's uh, framework laptop and they seems to be decent build quality and everything so you might it might be a really good step for you there. That's true and one thing that surprised me about the framework was the the aspect ratio is is a bit unusual. Um, don't ask me which one it is, but it's it's one that's slightly taller than sixteen nine. 1610 possibly something like that maybe it's, it's a squarish yeah. oh is it square okay yeah, well, it's um, not yeah square, they do have it? a not, not square square it's squarish right yeah. yeah they do have the the current one is the 14 model and i think they've teased the 16 model that has the, like the beefy speakers on the side of it and glowing friggin rgb and all of that shit which seems to be popular <laughs> with the kids these days <laughs> Yeah, the the sixteen inch one looks very promising because uh, a fifteen or a sixteen inch is is very suited to being a home computer as well as a travel computer, um, and you'll find that they'll fit in most laptop bags anyway, so it's it's not so bad. I won't do the same again. I did buy uh, uh, I don't know if this is fifteen inch. I basically thought well I don't want to have a desktop but i want to have something similar with a discrete graphics card in it and a bit of a powerhouse 32 gigs of ram and so on so i have this entrover kratos or kratos uh which it's a, it's a is big a boy. big <laughs> motherfucker yeah. <laughs> yeah and my problem is that it's very heavy i uh, i don't usually use the power uh with like I don't actually need the graphics card. Um, the games I'm playing are usually super old. And mm. um, because of the way I use a computer, basically half of the time is actually sitting on my lap. Uh, this breaks. I've already had to replace the bottom uh, bottom plate because it's a desktop replacement. And as such, it's probably designed to be sitting on a desk. And I just don't use a computer that way. Uh, not just that. Not not only that way. Yeah, I'm I basically for me a laptop to be laptop has to be made of metal, and ideally smaller. And uh, like it's it's really important that it that I don't get to. And I I'm I'm really rough with things. I don't I don't know how to look <laughs> after things properly. So uh, it's important for me that a laptop is made of metal and built in a way that it doesn't that it doesn't break on the other hand i also like things to be good looking so uh, like there are some really thick laptops that are built like a tank and i wouldn't want it either because it's just no thank you the kratos for me looks a bit too gamery to be honest uh it has the gaming game um, which i, I just don't like all up there it's a going to suggest a, a Lenovo ThinkPad to Michael until he said, <laughs> I, w- I want my laptop to be good looking. I went, oh, damn, that's ThinkPad's out. <laughs> I, I've had, I, I, I like the look of it on a level, but then I spent 20, half 2020 or 2021, I don't know, I was given a Lenovo ThinkPad from my company. And I don't know if it's just the fleet computers that they sell, like to businesses, or if it's the lot, but basically this had the the screen panel was a millimeter off to the side. It wasn't centered. So the there was like a little thin black bezel between the actual bezel and the screen panel, and it was larger on one side. It was driving me mad. I can understand that. With, with ThinkPads, because um, I'm more familiar with ThinkPads, ThinkPads, their T line, anything beginning with T, is kind of more for your average office worker. Their P line, where it's P14 or P15 or P16 or whatever, is their 
mobile workstation replacement line and they've they even have a p16s so it's like a p16 but slimmer <laughs> so it's actually more portable so it's a powerful motherfucker but it's slimmer yeah so, the annoying thing is like my personal there, uh, thinkpad that i almost never use to be honest uh is it's like um i think it's the t410 something like that um, I could be wrong, but then the one I had for work a few years ago was the exact same model, just with an S at the end, and it was so much better. It was so much thinner. It had more I/O. It was faster. Um, it had a nicer screen. Um, so like, it's crazy how much a letter makes in, in the model numbers. But yeah, ThinkPads like the upper tier ThinkPads are perfectly fine. Like, yeah, the um, the the P line have uh discrete nvidia cpus in them so if for obviously everyone out there in the linux land who's listening to our podcast um nvidia your mileage may vary depending on your distro and so on um but yeah the the p line of nvidia or uh, the p line of thinkpad workstation replacements do have NV- d- dedicated nvidia cards i look like I, every now and then I look at laptops and I like I don't I like things that's all right but I think HP has a nice looking machines some of them I don't know about the build quality I've seen some of their like you know they are in offices everywhere and they uh, don't know about that the Dells uh, I've seen a lot of the new Dells because they uh, and uh, a dev team in my work, they have got these new XPSs, you know, the ones that have got the uh, touch bar at the top. Uh, oh, yeah, they're but, very sleek. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, though. They, they, they look a bit flimsy. Uh, like, they are all right machines, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that's the XPS line, yeah. So, yeah, in, in each one, they all have, they have their consumer facing products and their the enterprise facing products. So, like, um, I think it's, it's a Dell Precision line is their enterprise facing product and for hp there's the pro book and then the, the elite book you want if you if you're thinking for a thinkpad replacement go for the elite book yeah but then yeah i don't know uh you have the linux vendors but i think the ni- nicest one that i looked at was uh slim book because they were doing some interesting stuff but i've never seen one in real life and that's my biggest problem like when i buy which I don't do often, right? But I decided when I buy a laptop, I want to see it and feel it before I I actually put the money up, which kind of rules out more Linux vendors. Because mm, unless you... Because they're always online. Yeah, you, you literally need to go to a conference and hope that somebody will have one and let you let you play with it so that you can try it. Because I've watched a ton of videos about, uh, you know, like, like we all do watch a ton of videos, but... People tell you their experience. They they don't know how you will feel about it, right? So that limits it to me to things that people know that I ha- that, that that some people I know have, or something that I can get hands hands on at work, or to go to like PC World, and they have like three or four brands of laptops, and like two of them. Like I would never want uh, yeah, yeah I I would never want your kind of basic. Uh, Acer because they might be decent machines but uh, they are really flimsy and you have to take extra care in handling them even if you're fine with the power of the machine like you know if you had it's a 15 inch laptop that's made of thinnish plastic and uh, yeah I don't know so you, you look you go to PC World and you see okay out of 20 computers that they have are like D3, and that doesn't give you a good sample size when you then actually want to want to buy something. I mean, for me, the keyboard typing feel is very much part of it. I'm not saying it's necessarily the highest up of my priorities, but it would certainly be factored into my consideration. One of the reasons why I tend to go for ThinkPads because ThinkPads have a very good reputation for their keyboard typing feel. Um, if other than that, if I was just going into PC World, I would absolutely go into PC World and just start typing on the demo models and go, no, that seems, feels like a piece of shit. I'm not going to pay for that one. Um, I'm just going to go for this one. Um, and that is also a plus in the direction of 
getting a, a desktop computer because you can choose your own keyboard. You can get your own full mechanical keyboards that you want with the, the awesome typing experience. So there's a plus in the direction of a, a, a desktop computer. And that's it, right? So you can you can mix and match things that you that you like. And uh, if even if you like the ThinkPad experience, you can get a USB ThinkPad keyboard that is exactly like you would find on a laptop. Um, so there are some good points for for desktops, and as well, like you can get you can get a decent bigger monitor. You can budget yourself. You can say, okay, I'm just gonna buy this now because that's what I have money, and I can expand it. Um, yeah, I can I can see the the plus points. Um, at the risk of contradicting my previous point, um, may Shane just I'm thinking of Shane, which is his desktop setup and his uh, Thunderbolt dock or his Type-C dock, you can get your big fancy monitor and you can plug in your fancy um, mechanical keyboard and have everything and your um, Logitech MX Master mouse if you if you're like you could you could get your home office set up down to pat and have that all plugged into your USB Type C dock and then just plug all of that into yeah, your laptop. It's so you could you, ultimate you could do that. Ultimate. You, you could definitely get your <laughs> uh, get uh, have your cake and eat it at the same time. That's how I feel with all this. Is that. Um, I, I feel like I'm refining my computer setup with every passing year. And uh, the older I get, the more perfect it becomes. You know? <laughs> you know? Well, you could also uh, put the computer, like with the desktop, you can put it wherever and just run a few cables to your workstation and uh, have absolutely no space wastage in there, just the keyboard, the monitor and the mouse and maybe some USB hub. So you're you're gonna get the Linus Tech Tips big big desktop uh, mouse mouse pad that big thing that they have. <laughs> I, I I say that facetiously. Though I've I've actually been looking at that myself and going I, I might get one of those. <laughs> I I don't I don't like that it's all the same design. I would like different designs and not like LTT like on it. Um, I would just like a design, but like that isn't just the same one, but uh. Yeah, I like what he does, that he does them in, like, different sizes. So, like, you can get them in, like, six or seven different sizes, and they all cost the same. So, it's it's that's actually quite ingenious, because, yeah. He, he actually now has about two or three designs for all of the same sizes now, and the, one of them is the Neon Cityscape, one that you probably are familiar with. There, There's one that's more muted, that is more black in color so you can get that one as well yeah I, I like i have one already that i got off amazon years ago um it's kind of mucky now though so i, I need to take it at the back and hose it or something <laughs> like it's, it's just it's gotten that bad like where it just looks kind of gray it's so dirty um you know it's not like quite that bad like something you'd see on reddit or whatever but uh no it's it, but it needs a bit of a clean um and uh yeah if i can just i just fucking hate seeing cables like that's my only thing i just i'm i'm a big nerd when it comes to cable management i just can't stand seeing like cables trailing anywhere it, it just looks so wrong. What, you're, what you're saying is you want to get the Linux slads community to roast your setup no no i don't don't <laughs> dare show anyone my setup like i'm very secretive about that <laughs> and i'm like don't look at it don't look at it it's terrible so, uh, what I've been up to of the last couple of weeks is I have done the drastic thing of changing from Endeavor OS over to Nobara Linux. So, Nobara Linux, if anyone is, oh, Nobara, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, for anyone who's unfamiliar, is like Fedora, but with extra niceties on top of it. So, it's, it's almost like Ubuntu to Ubuntu Mint or to let's put that, let's say that again <laughs> so it's almost like Ubuntu to Linux Mint the way that Linux Mint kind of do extra niceties and little things here there where you're like oh I didn't even think about that but that's handy so uh, Nobara does that to Fedora 
and it'd be little things like they add in their own custom repos. Um, I think DNF by default is kind of slow. And then in the, there was a guide online that I saw to say, oh, yeah, if DNF is running slow, run of go into the config file of it and like rather than it pinging one server at a time like they're like oh if you have plenty of bandwidth why not ping um six servers at a, at a time or like have six <laughs> simultaneous downloads and then i went into the config file and Nubara had already done those steps i was like oh, oh, oh i don't even have to do that oh that's handy <laughs> um and a big win behind it is anyone who's familiar with Glorious Egg Roll. Oh, yeah. It's the same guy who does Glorious Egg Roll has customized um, Fedora. So it's his distro, effectively. Um, Sorry, what's Glorious <laughs> Egg Roll? Oh, Glorious Egg Roll. So there's, there's Proton, um, the wine-like translation there for gaming. And then there's Proton, Proton GE, which is Glorious Egg Roll. So he does his own version of it. Um, so he does his own customization for customized version of it. And as far as I know, he's a Red Hat developer, so he, he kind of knows his shit. But um, so there's that guy, and he's he's been running his own customized version of Fedora. For, or uh, uh, Sorry, he's been running his own version of Proton for a very long time called Proton GE and so now he's turned his hand at doing his own custom distro based on Fedora um, it is quite handy for gaming but it isn't necessarily strictly focused at gaming um, but uh, yeah it's been very good um, I very rarely dip into the command line anyway even when I was on Endeavor OS for me I just wanted the seamless uh, package integration to get the latest packages getting a semi up to date kernel and the I'm running like a 62 kernel like quite up to date so that is ticked for me as well um what else I'm trying to think off the top of my head um oh um I was pleasantly surprised by flatpak so as part of this experiment, I'm also um, installing things from Flatpak as much as possible. As in, I search for a package, and if a Flatpak is available, I will install that package. Um, I've actually been pleasantly surprised how much is in now is how much is now in FlatHub. So one that I was searching for was uh, on my laptop. I'm coincidentally running Kinoite, which is like the KDE version of Fedora Silverblue. Um, so um, because that is immutable, then there's probably difficulty installing packages and probably your only source for that is FlatHub. Um, when I was traveling over to Boston recently, I had that. I was like, okay, well, I don't want to connect to the hotel Wi-Fi just connect directly to the hotel Wi-Fi because of security reasons I could be doing banking banking transactions or whatever. I want to install a VPN. I searched in FlatHub and um, Proton VPN is in FlatHub. I was like, oh, that is very handy. I was not <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> That's so yeah. I, I was actually mm. pleasantly surprised how much is in FlatHub. So uh, if anyone has not checked out FlatHub in a in long while, I would recommend checking out FlatHub because there's a surprising amount of things that are in FlatHub now. That's very interesting, yeah, because I've started to see the benefits of FlatHub. Like, for instance, I, ha I have Bitwig Studio, and then there are some music plugins that are available that will only work if you also have the FlatHub version of those in addition to the Bitwig FlatHub, um, or Flatpak, I should say um and like if you have but if you have them both then they work fine and I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's some that have been packaged like that only work on windows normally but then they've packaged them in in flatpak and they work on linux with bitwig which is amazing um i haven't tried them out yet though but uh, i really want to try that out at some point to get back to it i guess uh so desktops versus laptops i think what we're getting at is that yes you can use a laptop instead of a desktop and you'll be perfectly fine these days. Um, 
Does anyone disagree with that? So it might mean that you might change a few things, maybe up to and including your uh, desktop environment, because when I was sitting at a uh, at a desk at work, uh, KD was quite suitable, or you know, uh, it was all right because you have the mouse, you have the keyboard, and you kind of uh, you know you grab your cup, you have a cup of coffee in there as well. But when I when I'm on a laptop, I just it, it's it's either GNOME or nothing basically. I tried some others, I tried um, Sway or other things, but uh, it's just nothing replaces the joy of using GNOME on on a uh, on a laptop for me. So obviously, other people wouldn't be thinking about it this strongly, for example. But it is a different parad- paradigm, so it might influence the the way you work and the software you choose. That's true. Um, I find though that it, it, the the CPUs and laptops these days are they're they're just they're like that. You could I could probably get a laptop nowadays that's more powerful than my desktop um, easily, like no no question. Um, and it probably probably wouldn't be that expensive. So that's the logic I'm going on. And with framework laptops, obviously, yeah, you can upgrade them. So there there is that too. It's certainly a compelling argument. Um, on the point of Mike saying that KD seemed to suit him when he was on a desktop computer with um, a keyboard and mouse and, um, and so on, I'm like, yeah, that's the reason why I buy for KD. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't tend to use laptops that often um, and from a Linux point of view. So um, I'm mainly, when I get home in the evenings, I'm sitting in front of my desktop. So maybe some of Mike's arguments would sound more compelling to me if it was, if it was more laptop-centric. But I'm on a desktop most of the time, so. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um even with work, I just have it docked here on the, the, the desk, like with the screen and the wireless keyboard and mouse and, and stuff like that. So it's the identical setup just for work and uh, work and play. It is quite nice, though, even when I'm in the office, that I can unhook the two cables that go into the laptop, sit back in the chair, uh, one one round like across the other, you know, and, and just uh, and just work on my uh, on my lap and maybe, you know, turn around in the chair or whatever. Um, I like the freedom of laptops. It's um, it's not just because um, I live in small places where, where uh, space is a premium and that I need a work laptop to be able to work from home and from the office. It's just the whole principle of it. It's a small thing, as small as possible. If I need to put it out of the way, it gets put out of the way. Uh, if I if I want to work from the bloody park, I actually could. I've never tried, but I think I have five G connection in the park next door. So no, next door in the park across the road. So I could probably just take my phone, take my laptop, and spend a few hours in the uh, you know working working uh, in the park, especially if the weather is like it was today. Um, so that's that's why I don't think. I mean, never say never, right? But I don't think I I, ca- I cannot foresee a reason why I would buy myself a desktop, since I haven't done in the last twenty years, or you know, ever since I started to buy my own computers. So, so that almost wraps it up for this week. Um, just to go through all the socials because I've I tended to skip them. So uh, let's go through every single one because we know you really want to hear about this. So we have a store. Uh, linuxlads.com forward slash store uh, we've got a forum uh, where we post the episode notes for each episode in its own dedicated thread so you can chat about it and I will try to post there more because I don't ever uh, forum.linuxlads.com um, you can go to our Steam community go to uh, steamcommunity.com slash groups slash linuxlads um, so you can see where we're gaming and all that kind of thing uh, linuxlads.com forward slash telegram for the telegram chat uh, slash matrix for matrix uh, slash discord for discord but I don't really think we really uh, use that that often <laughs> uh, slash twitter for twitter which we also don't use that often just we announce the episodes basically and that's it um, and then linuxlads.com forward slash mastodon 
for Mastodon where we just kind of announce the episodes, but you'll also find our personal Mastodon details in the uh, episode notes as well. Um, you can also email us on show at Linux lads, which is also just basically the best way because it doesn't rely on any platform. It's just an email that goes direct to us with your thoughts and your feelings and your concerns. Um, and then <laughs> we can go to, you can go to uh, dublinlinux.org if you want to do any of the meetups if you're in the Dublin area. They are approximately fort- fortnightly. Thereabouts. Um, one thing I will just say to clarify is if you want any uh, clarification on any of these links, if you um, heard the announcement or like, oh, what's what's that link? I can't remember. Feel free to email us at show at com or to ping us on either Telegram or Matrix if you want a reminder of any of the specific things and we will clarify. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's been it for this week. Um, any closing thoughts? No? Good. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. We will see you in uh, about two weeks and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah, let's 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 give the listener a bit of a breather now.